Um, so I just wanted to introduce Darren Atkins, who's the Chief Technology Officer of Automation at the Royal Free um, London NHS Trust, and he'll be speaking to us about robotic process automation. Fantastic. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me along to today's session. It's the first time I've been in one of these uh, these forums, so it's really great to engage with you. I've literally got 10 minutes to share with you the last three years of my life around automation in the NHS. And I want to try and give you a flavour of some of the great work that myself and my team have been doing uh, and a way that we can really bring value to the NHS. But to start off with some really uh, bad news is robots are taking over the world. We're all going to lose our jobs. We're not going to get paid. But in all seriousness, out of the box, this technology appears very threatening to our hardworking staff um, because it's about, you know, it can be used to replace staff. And that's not what we're about. So in the NHS and all the trusts I engage with, we use a philosophy called making time matter. So it's very, very simple. If we can use this technology to free up time for our hardworking staff to do more or care more for our patients, it has to be a really good thing uh, to do. There are obviously a lot of secondary benefits around automation, around some cash releasing benefits and better clinic utilization, reduction in DNA rate in outpatients as an example. But the core goal is to make our staff more efficient, make all the hours they spend in the NHS more enjoyable, spending more time with their patients. And that's a really important thing. For those of you who don't know what RPA is or robotic process automation, um, I think it's really important to understand what a robot can do for you. Now note I use the term robot. A lot of uh, suppliers and vendors in the marketplace use the term virtual workers or digital workers. Uh, to, to me, a robot is less threatening. We, we can visualize what a robot looks like. Um, and a robot is almost a way of supporting staff in the workplace. RPA, very simplistic terms, robotic process automation, is sophisticated software that allows me to mimic what a human can do via a keyboard and a mouse into any application. The only time I have difficulty is when I need a physical pair of hands, because our robots are virtual, we don't have hands. Um, but you know, we can pretty much do everything, and, and to date there hasn't been any exceptions to that. There are different levels of challenges depending on the, the platforms we're automating into. As some of you know, you know some of the NHS uh, nationwide platforms are a little bit slow, they're uh, somewhat prehistoric, um, and we need to make uh, allowances for that. But we can pretty much do anything. But I think over time, RPA has moved on, and our focus is very much uh, different now. It's almost like a hybrid strategy. So can we use RPA to automate the as is? The answer is we can. We can do it quickly at scale. Uh, in a clinically safe way to free up time for our hardworking staff. But equally, if you can combine the RPA technologies with what we're doing around innovation, it can become a real transformational type tool. So our robots can do more than just automate the as is. Just to let you know, we can do things like language translation, the ability to translate into 60 different languages in real time. And in fact, we're starting to do that to send patient letters out in their native tongue using real time translation. We can look at a chunk of text and apply sentiment analysis. Is that positive or negative for use of language? So looking at things like job references or even potentially a clinical report. I can take unstructured data and make sense of it for, by applying algorithms. And, and, and that's been used, for example, in, in pre-booking order comms for cardiorespiratory patients. Um, I can look at a picture of everyone on this screen now, work out the color of your eyes, if you're smiling, the emotion on your face. I can read handwriting. So the important point is this technology is not new tech. It's relatively old tech now, and it's, it's, you know, it's changing at such a fast pace. Um, we just need to keep up with it. We also have the ability to collect to take structured data from um, static images, so things like scan clinical records or invoicing. We can create e-forms to collect structured data. We can even do chatbots. So all of this technology sits in the cloud. Think of it as a notion of having robot workers in a cloud that can service any area of, of the NHS. In terms of some of the things we've done for it, so we've done a lot of corporate work, back office, traditional things, invoice processing, financial reports, all of the Royal Freeze recruitment process is running on a robot around sending out conditional offers, um, doing job references, doing ID checks, all these kinds of things. Um, it, it, it works very well. But where myself and my team, I think, have pioneered in the NHS is using this technology to do more clinical processes. And up until we did it, I think it's safe to say it's a bit of a holy grail. You know, how, how will we let a robot deal with a patient pathway? But actually, the methodology that we've created allows us to develop these solutions very quickly and, and in a safe way. So we're doing work around referrals. A lot of trust in the country now are using robot workers to access ERS, to take referrals, take clinical data and put that into EPR, into their passes. The advantage is the clinicians now looking at the full history of that patient's medical record rather than just the referral. We're doing work around two week wait um, for cancer you know, MDT outcomes, um, order comms management, work around um, antibody testing. 
you name it, within clinical, we would have done it and we've been involved with that. Um, but where, where the automation is really great is fixing some of the here and now issues. So in COVID, particularly around doing things like appointment rescheduling, cancellation, rebooking, we can use robots to do that. Um, I even had an example in my old trust where we were getting text messages from patients saying they wanted to cancel their appointment, but just because staff were busy at the contact center, that appointment wouldn't be canceled, which means it goes to waste. So just doing one simple automa automation took about two weeks to do, now gave Colchester Hospital uh, additional 13,000 slots a year and stopped them, stopped them wasting a lot of money. In terms of the capability of the robots, in a two-year period at East Suffolk and North Essex, I delivered nearly 80,000 hours worth of time back to the trust. Um, for an investment of about £100,000 a year across a team of three of us. So this isn't about making a massive investment. Um, it's about starting small and scaling. In terms of how do we do it, we've created our own centre of excellence at the Royal Free, um, where we have a team of people now who can create these processes and work with NHS partners to develop things, say, in a safe and secure way. We have a six-stage automation life cycle that we follow. Um, but more importantly, we've built a massive library of work that can be repurposed and used um, in terms of objects and processes. So to date, we've probably created well over 120 different processes now. Um, and at the Royal Free, we're also doing work for a number of our partners. So we're working with people like the Royal Marsden, uh, Mid-Essex, Norfolk and Norwich. And we go up the country as far as Gateshead, Blackpool and, and other areas. And there's around about 30 trusts now all on a common platform. So if you think about the ability to collaborate and share and repurpose our solutions, it's absolutely huge. And that's the key benefit here. Um, you know, it's not about starting again from scratch so we, so we can share the work we've done. We've also created a something called the NHS Digital Exchange, uh, which I created just over a year ago now, which allows trust to share the work they've done. So again, in, in the whole spirit of NHS, you know, for the NHS, by the NHS, we're able to share our work, which means you can go into that library now and download bot code that will allow you to interact with VRS, um, access the referral, download all of the attachments and put it into any one of four different passes. You know, if you think about how that can scale across just one NHS trust, it's absolutely huge. And I'm using that at Mid and South, sorry, um, Mid Essex Trust right now to um, take ERSs across three different individual trusts across three passes and you can think about the the number of thousands of hours that will save uh, is quite incredible i've also created a number of blueprints so little snapshots that show you what processes can do and the benefits it can uh, receive this is work in progress and many have been many of these have been launched so here's an example of just sending out the um, conditional offers to staff it runs every night at the royal free it takes about 45 minutes for a human to do just one applicant and if you think that runs every night for 30 or 40 applicants every single day of the year that's a huge amount of savings over the year just for one trust um, and this is a process that's now being taken by a number of other organizations as well but when we talk about the here and now um, COVID was a great example for me. The pandemic really allowed me to prove that this technology uh, could be very, very powerful. So in less than 24 hours, it, it did almost kill me. I delivered two nationwide processes for delivering NHS mail accounts to every care home in the country, as well as sharing over 1 million unique shopping vouchers from Iceland to care homes as well, um, spun up, run out of a central platform across the whole of the country. Um, which is great. And definitely with the pandemic, things like antibody testing has been done through a robot and we're looking to see how we can manage some of the COVID work now. Even take, taking something as simple as switching patients from a face-to-face -face appointment to a video one takes a lot of human resource to do that. Robots are doing that now. Um, so you can see the power. But when we talk about innovation, We've done a lot of work around the Microsoft Power Apps and Microsoft Teams. It's eventually making its way throughout the NHS, so we should really embrace it. And it's a great way of interacting with um, our, our, our employees, our customers. And what we've done at the Royal Free this year, specifically as one example, is uh, fairly quickly, within you know, less than a week, I think it was, we created a flu app on a Power App, which had a Power BI real-time dashboard, and the robot sat behind that and updated ESR and cohort. So what that gave the Royal Free for the first time is a paperless flu vaccination program, but real time tracking of which wards have been done, which cohorts of patients, um, saving loads, loads of time. We think about 14 weeks worth of admin time was saved through that. But again, through sharing and caring, we offered that to every trust in the country to take for free and to use it. Um, and that's kind of what we're all about. Just finally, before I open it up to questions, myself and my team, I show this not just to boost my ego, but we won nine awards over the last couple of years. But the real thing is that the great thing about this whole program of work 
it is, it's been created and delivered by NHS substantive staff. We haven't used any expensive contracting organisations, any third parties. And what we're really trying to do is build that value and that knowledge within the NHS to do it for themselves. So I said already at the Royal Free, uh, I joined the Royal Free in uh, October last year, so I'm relatively new. And part of the reason I moved to the Royal Free from my current trust was they embraced the whole consultancy type business. So we offer a consultancy arm where we don't make any money, but it allows organisations to tap into our expertise. And this is why we're currently supporting probably 20 plus trusts now in the country in doing this sort of work. It keeps the knowledge in the NHS, it's good value for money, and it allows us to scale and deliver this stuff really, really quickly. So that's a real high level tour of automation in just under 10 minutes. I could speak for hours and show you examples, but I'll be more than happy for anyone to contact me afterwards if they want to have more detail or, or any follow up.